Hello friends. In this session, what I am trying to discuss is, a, is a, an architecture solution uh, for a particular scenario uh, for deriving delta or, or the changed files instead of delivering the full. So, so this is actually a, a custom solution which is which is kind of a plugin and it's an architecture which I have developed uh, for a custom suited environment. So uh, this video could be long and, and uh, if you really are benefiting fr from this video or are interested to it, uh, please go through or, or you can spare it. So let's start. Uh, what I have today is uh, two tables. First of all, I have two tables, an employee table and, a, and the department table. And with, with this table, what we are trying to do is we uh, we uh, supposedly we uh, run jobs on on a, on a daily basis uh, with the help of this join and and we uh, extract this data uh, in in the in the form of a flat file so this file is 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 the one which is extracted on on a daily basis now this job runs on on, on a daily basis uh, but we want to have a, a flexibility we want to have a flexibility to run this job intermittently within the day which means uh, we would like to run this job every four hours uh, within the day or, or every six hours within the day and extract only the changed data what I am trying to uh, show is, is, a, is a very simple uh, table uh, which is having two tables which are having joint which are which are joined upon but this query could be a very complex one joined uh, across like three or four tables or even more and then we are when and then we try to extract data based upon that query uh, now the inherent nature of extracting delta would be uh, to create dimension tables and, and from the transactional database create a warehouse and from there kind of uh, build your delta using the CDC but those are are, are, are the best possible or, or the best practices but here what we are talking is is a very immature table which are not even normalized to do no, second normal forms because of which we do not have a primary key stuff like that so it's not possible for us and uh, you know it's not possible for us to generate uh, the delta from uh, with the help of CDC or it's not possible for us you know to generate that uh, database uh, the delta from these from these tables because maybe these tables are, are being truncated on a daily basis so we cannot implement replication so it is a special case where you very very it's not possible for you to implement replication or, or, or CDC uh, and, and then you are trying to derive uh, delta for a particular complex query for, uh, and you want to run uh, you want to run to a flexibility of having the de uh, delivering the delta uh, files f across a day I mean in a day you you want the first run for each day to be delivering the, de delivering the full file uh, on a daily basis and after that whenever you run across the day uh, you want to deliver only the changed data at the same time you, you don't want to run into locks and concurrencies uh, and, and you want to segregate your uh, transactional server from your uh, warehouse so having this problem statement in mind we have this architecture so keep in mind why I'm doing this thing uh, okay so that is our problem statement having said that this is our base query from which we are generating this uh, file now what I have here is I'm con considering a transactional database I, I call it a tran data so this is uh, nothing but my transactional database and then in this transactional database I have created a uh, few tables there are, there are four tables employee department and, and, and files and process law and again I have created a feed warehouse database uh, from which we will actually be or, or, or it will be the database that I'll be hitting for generating these files across because I do not want to induce any lockings as such at the same uh, on, on the main database and for generating these file as an as a ETL solution I would be using SSIS uh, now let's consider the solution that I have I have created a table which is a process log what does this table have let's just see I have created two tables process log and files so if you look at each of them each of the tables what you see is I have uh, a feed ID the feed name uh, last process date and is delta enabled this is a flag to say that would you want to derive delta fr from the last run or would you want to generate the full file uh, that's about it and then what I have this is your process log table 
so if you look at the process log table this this is it's having a primary key on the feed id and then there is a foreign key reference i mean referencing so so uh, and then we have the files table files table is referring for the feed id so the reference is on the feed id and then if you look at the files again what we see is we have the feed id the file name if we if you are generating two files for this for this feed uh, we can add one more uh, record in, you know to this table so and then what we have is the query so this is the query which is used to generate this file for feed 10 so and the feed name is org and it is it is being you know it is being placed after generation it is being placed at this directory the files are placed at this directory that's uh, that's the two tables that i have generated uh, i mean that i have that i have built okay so that's it and how and what is the thing that we would want to you know uh, what is the way that you would want to deliver your your delta files across the day so the, as i said the first run for the day would be full files and the next run within uh, for that particular day whenever you run it it could be 5 minutes 10 minutes whatever intervals it is it will simply derive derive the changed records and it, the changed records will be delivered in, in a format of two file what is it i mean again i'm going back to the terminology of triggers uh, if you remember tick trigger uses the inserted and the deleted tables so it's something like that what i have here is two files i will be delivering the first file would be called employee underscore full dot txt and the second uh, uh, and cross the day this would be the first file that i'll deliver the second to the downstream application the, uh, and all the uh, you know all the preceding runs for the day will be having two files the first would be employee underscore d and the second would be uh, employee underscore i which means delete and insert so uh, as the downs all the downstream application what they have to do is they have to run first the delete files and then they have to run insert files so what i mean by this so if there is an after the first run if there is any new records which have been inserted it will be present in your insert file if there is any deletes which has happened from uh, it will be present in your delete file uh, and for what for update so update will have one records each in each of these files update will have a delete record for the last uh, file delivered i mean if there is a record which was delivered for employee id 1 and, and the name has been updated so it will have a record in the delete file which will have the last name and then it will have the fresh record in the insert file which will have a new new name so now now let's try to perform a, uh, a run and, and see how uh, what is and then, and then we'll try to know the code behind or the architecture so let's just try to see uh, so first of all what I do is uh, the process log uh, so I, I update it to zero I simply let me let me update this uh, table to uh, to a um, to zero and also to the uh, to the last process date as of yesterday. So I I do it to zero, and last process date is of yesterday's. So that means that means it's it's of yesterday's. So to, uh, so today the first run would be of that of the full file. And so this is the plugin SSIS package which I have uh, built. So this is your ETL for the full files and, and this complete package can be used as a plugin uh, for delivering the delta so so the first run when whenever this this run uh, occurs what this SSIS package does is let's just try to see for, uh, let's just check out the run first and then we'll see the code we'll go behind the code so since we have we are running it for the first uh, run for today this should generate us the full file so and uh, not the delta files so let's just check out first right so it has generated the full file for today the first full file for today they are empty now this is the first full file now if we go to our feed warehouse and check out the tables you will see there is there is one table which says feeds then I have this is the naming convention in the code that I have used 
feeds then underscore file name underscore one that means the first file so what I have here is a, a next trying when I run it let me delete this and let's rerun this so this is running for the delta so we can see there are two files generated but since we did not change anything these both these files are empty we have not changed anything and now if you go and see in the database feed warehouse database we see there is these tables we have the i and the d table which are both of them would be empty and then we have a table under uh, with the with the uh, prefix as two uh, sorry the suffix as two now let's try to change something we will perform we will insert a record a new record into our table right let's try to update let's see what is the record value for two for three it is Ronaldo what I do is I update it to David I have performed an update and then I delete one right so I, I delete Torres so what I see is let me try to delete this so we have deleted this now now there should be in the insert file the result should be we should have a record for Rocky in and then in the insert file we should have a record for David we should have a record for Ronaldo in the delete file and then a record for uh, Torres in the in the delete file so now let me let's rerun this let's see what we have in the in, in the delete files so we have in the delete file Ronaldo and Torres Ronaldo uh, Torres was deleted and Ronaldo was updated so it is in the delete file and in the insert file we have David David and Rocky right that is that is what it was I mean Rocky was inserted and David was updated so that's that's what we can see here so that's the solution basically across the day when you run this when when you run this feed you should be able to deliver the files in this fashion and, and considering huge huge files it will be much less I mean when you're trying to deliver the complete file it would have uh, the size would be huge so uh, and at the same time the clients you know the downstream applications can run over these files first perform the delete and then the, then the insert so this is the solution now let's try to get the bit bite of it what it is what it is in the in the background how these things work uh, so what I have here is first of all what we do is we have okay let's just start with the variable first where I have de declared two variables that is uh, that is a feed ID which you feed for this SSIS package is 10 this this package will run for your organization you know feed uh, or, or the job and then we have is delta file so is delta file is, is a flag that I have I have mentioned or, or, or you know uh, put here so it's its value is initial value is 0 now what we have here let's see first the SQL task does is it takes feed ID as input and, and checks the current date so current date against the last process date if the last process date you know feed uh, feed process last process date is, is, is less than the current date it tries to update the is delta file value to zero and, and for the particular feed ID that means this should be the first fresh run for you so that is uh, when the, then this feed runs uh, for our first time on the day next next what we do is I mean for this we have uh, we have you know this value value as input not to say, say this and you know, so that is taken as input now let's move on for delta where what we what we do here is we are trying to set the uh, set the flag so this is going to check is delta enabled I could have done on the same task but I have just you know segregated that so it, it checks the delta flag and based upon which it sets your results up. next it runs a stored procedure which is USB build feed warehouse now what does this mean let's try to uh, 
check the stored procedure USB build where uh, feed warehouse uh, so build feed warehouse what this feed, uh, what this stored procedure does is it checks the is delta file enabled for 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 the particular feed ID and then I have used is is a uh, you know uh, this is nothing but uh, dynamic T SQL which is for cleanup so first is it goes and counts in the feed warehouse uh, table for 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 the names like feed name with with the with the feed name so if there is anything with the feed name prior to today you know if there is uh, which has run so for example what I do here is I'll, I'll show you let's again try to update this this value to yesterday's date right and then we have these tables we have these tables now what it does is what this stored procedure does is if we run this stored procedure okay sorry mm, we call it as right now if you see the tables there is only one table created so basically this stored procedure has since the value was zero since the is delta value is zero it begins to clean up it performs it checks for all the tables for that particular feed and it begins to clean up first of all it drops all the tables and then it goes and creates with for the feed id it uses the query that is being used in, in the files table for that feed and, and that file name and then for that if there are multiple files it will loop across and then it will create uh, a, a table name and, and with the table name it will create the f uh, you know table it will set the table name and then create the table so, so it will loop across if there are multiple files it will go ahead and create uh, the tables for them here so and it is select n2 so basically we are trying to select this data from the transactional server and put it to warehouse server, uh, warehouse database so once that's that's done that's that's all it this does and this is for for your delta and is delta enabled when uh, that was for when delta was zero that means that is the first run when it is when delta is enabled uh, we call this this stored procedure with the feed id now let's see what we have here in this stored procedure what this stored procedure does for us this is this simple stored procedure so it checks for you know the table suffix uh, and if your delta is enabled it is it is trying to check for the feed id and based upon the table suffix and it, it tries to drop the table and it is again selecting into that table again which means if we try to run let's take a look if we try to run over again the delta has become 1 now if you check this you know if you check this basically process log since the file since the job has run the delta has become 1 now so once this becomes 1 what this if 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 we run this uh, feed again if we run this proc again the next time if we run this so it it goes in this procedure and then if we refresh the table it builds it builds another table for two now what if we try to run it again uh, why is the delete here I mean I'm, I'm just trying to it will, it will drop a table right so so the select is clear and what it is trying to drop is at any point in time we'll have only two versions there if we run this again we'll see two and three that's all that's all I'm trying to say so basically what this Delta does is it creates another table with three and at any point in time we'll have only two tables and we'll compare our delta against it what these tables have is the complete data based upon the query so basically it's it's using the query 
from the query out and I'm creating a table in, in the feed warehouse with the select into clause. It's a simple flat table, that's all that this does. Right, so that is clear. Now we go back, this is a condition for us and the condition is if the delta file is, is equal to 1 and this is for delta file 0. zero. So here is the full file being generated. Full file will be generated through this query. The query will always remain this. So I've actually, you can hard code your query here. Because any point in time, the first job that runs will have a table name of this, always, right? Similarly, because of our naming convention that we have used, the, gen the delta file will always have this, will always bear the name, this. So we can hard code, the insert and the delete will always bear this name. Now we have another procedure which is to populate the delta tables. What does this procedure mean, do for us? Let's check. It's a very simple, you know, solution for populate delta table. This is the procedure. So this procedure is uh, tries to pull out the table values which are currently there. It will try to pull out these two names and based upon them, it will try to run your uh, prepare the delta tables so if I if I run this feed for example if I run this feed with the feed ID and and go back and see what it is here what is the what are what are what have been generated we'll see two tables that have been generated now what is the content of this table if we simply you know see the content There is nothing because there was no change in both these both these table that was that we had done. So there is nothing here, right? There is nothing here. So that is why we we have not been. If if there was any change now, how are we trying to generate this table? That will take take a look now. So this table is basically giving is is the query based upon which we actually generate this table is here. We are using this dynamic SQL, you know, build. If you look at, we are trying to gen, uh, we are trying to use this. So, the accept clause. So, what this accept does is, delta table name i from new table. So, this is the new table, table name. So that is new table means uh, table name with the with the higher higher uh, suffix value. Like if there are three and two, it will be three and against two so this will be uh, this data this query will give you the inserted data and again this query will give you the deleted data we run this and based upon which we try to generate this these two file uh, these two tables and once these two tables are generated we try to run our uh, you know the dft tasks to uh, to generate uh, the flat files so what we have what we have achieved through this plugin is, is very simple we have we have a database we are not hitting the transactional database for running our our, our query uh, and we are not uh, hitting uh, we are not uh, issuing any concurrency at the same time we are trying to implement or, or generate the delta tables we are trying to deliver them and and when there are there is a scenario where you cannot implement replication or, or change data capture uh, because of various reasons um, for the lack of primary key or the flyer for the lack of the transactional table dependency you can have this query uh, or, or this short sort of a, of a solution and this is a very custom solution for, for a particular uh, you know issue that I had encountered so, so that uh, we're in uh, we're in a scenario where this would be helpful for uh, for us to generate the Delta files um, so that's it from my side friends I hope this is is, is really helpful to you all and uh, this solution can you know the custom the down downstream applications can somewhere uh, access these files and at the same time across the day it gives us a, it you know empowers us or, or gives us the capability to generate uh, the delta and absorb them with a with a varied if we have if we create a SQL job which runs uh, this this SSIS package we 
we will not not only able will not only be able to generate the files for for a, a variable time. I mean, it could be six hours, four hours, four hours, twelve hours, the way you want to, uh, and and it will be uh, the duration uh, of your delta generation is is not kind of uh, fixed. So it is it is up to your flexibility. So I, in this scenario, I I particularly found this uh, find uh, this solution very helpful. And and if you really uh, would want to dig into the code that I have written. uh you can email me i would uh, share share the good uh, code with you and you can have a look at it and and, and then uh, try and understand what is what it is there thank you